Is this the end of your beloved plant or could a miracle rescue bring it back to life? A question that many plant lovers dread. We've all been there. One day, your plant is bursting with life, flaunting lush green leaves. The next, it's a pitiful sight with drooping wilting leaves. It's a heart-wrenching sight to see a once vibrant plant near its end. But don't lose hope just yet. A wilting plant isn't always a lost cause. In fact, it might be a cry for help, a sign that your plant is in distress and needs your attention. With the right knowledge and a bit of effort, you can often save a wilting plant and nurse it back to health. So what's the secret to reviving a wilting plant? How can you rescue your green friend from its wilting woe? That's exactly what we're here to explore. Welcome to the ultimate guide on rescuing your plants and bringing those wilting leaves back to life. First, we need to diagnose the problem. Just like doctors, we need to identify the underlying issue causing our plants distress before we can prescribe the right treatment. So, how do we do this? Let's start by looking for common signs of distress. Yellowing leaves, for instance, are a loud cry for help. They could indicate overwatering, underwatering, or a lack of essential nutrients. On the other hand, droopy stems might be a sign that your plant is thirsty and needs more water. Now don't jump to conclusions just yet. While these symptoms may seem straightforward, it's essential to consider the overall condition of your plant. For example, if only the lower leaves are yellowing, your plant might be lacking nitrogen. If the yellowing is accompanied by leaf drop, your plant might be overwatered. Next, let's talk about pests, the tiny troublemakers of the plant world. They're not always visible to the naked eye, but they leave telltale signs. Look for tiny holes or a sticky residue on the leaves. Keep an eye out for any discoloration or strange patterns on your plant's foliage. These could be signs of a pest infestation. And what about the soil? It can tell you a lot about your plant's health. If it's constantly wet and your plant looks unhappy, you might be overwatering. Conversely, if the soil is always dry and your plant's leaves are wilting, it's probably begging for a drink. Remember, different plants have different needs. Some like it hot, some like it cool. Some prefer a sunny spot while others thrive in the shade. Understanding your plant's natural habitat can provide valuable clues about what it needs to thrive. Lastly, don't forget to give your plant a thorough checkup. Examine the roots, the stem, the leaves, and even the pot. Look for anything out of the ordinary. Is the pot too small? Are the roots rotting? Is there mold? These signs can help you diagnose what's wrong with your plant. Knowing the cause of the wilt is half the battle won. So don't be disheartened if your plant is looking a little under the weather. With a little detective work, you can identify the problem and begin your plant's road to recovery. Now, let's take immediate action. When your plant starts to wilt, there are a few crucial steps to take right away. First, move your plant to a shaded area, away from direct sunlight. This reduces stress on the plant and slows down the transpiration rate. Next, trim the dead or dying parts of the plant. This helps the plant focus its energy on new growth, rather than trying to save the parts that are beyond recovery. After that, check the health of the roots. If they are mushy or have a foul smell, it could be a sign of root rot, a serious condition that needs immediate attention. Also ensure your plant is in a well-draining pot, Poor drainage can lead to waterlogged soil and root rot. Lastly, consider adjusting your watering schedule based on the plant's requirements. Overwatering and underwatering are common causes of wilting. Remember these quick steps can save your plant from further damage. Water is life, but too much or too little can be deadly. Just as humans can suffer from both dehydration and water intoxication, plants too can wilt from overwatering or underwatering. But don't despair there's always a way to bring your green friends back to the peak of their health. First, let's focus on overwatered plants. Overwatering can cause root rot, a condition that can be fatal if not addressed promptly. If you suspect your plant is overwatered, the first thing you need to do is carefully remove it from its pot and inspect its roots. Healthy roots should be white or light brown and firm to the touch. If the roots are mushy and dark, they're likely suffering from root rot. To help your plant recover, you'll need to trim the affected roots and then repot the plant into fresh, well-draining soil. Remember, moderation is key when it comes to watering. It's better to underwater than to overwater. Now, let's move on to underwatered plants. These plants typically have dry, brittle leaves and may drop leaves prematurely. The soil may also pull away from the sides of the pot, a telltale sign of underwatering. Reviving an underwatered plant is a little bit like reviving a dehydrated person. You don't want to flood the system all at once. Slow and deep watering is the way to go. Wet the soil thoroughly, then wait until it starts to dry out before watering again. Remember, consistency is key. Don't let your plant dry out completely before giving it a drink. Instead, 
Aim to keep the soil evenly moist. And there you have it. With a little care and attention, you can bring your overwatered or underwatered plants back from the brink. The key is to diagnose the problem correctly and then take appropriate action. With the right watering techniques, your plants can thrive again. So, roll up your sleeves and get ready to play plant doctor. Your green friends are counting on you. Next, we'll tackle nutrition and pests. Just as we humans need a balanced diet to stay healthy, our leafy friends also rely on a mix of essential nutrients. And let's not forget about those pesky pests that can turn your green paradise into a plant nightmare. Let's start with the nutrient boost. It's like giving your plants a spa day, but instead of face masks and massages, we're talking about fertilizers and compost. Plants need a variety of nutrients, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, to grow strong and healthy. These nutrients can be found in commercial fertilizers or homemade compost. When choosing a fertilizer, remember that different plants have different nutritional needs. Some might need a nitrogen-rich diet, while others might crave more phosphorus or potassium. It's essential to do a bit of research to understand what your particular plant needs. And if you're going the compost route, remember that well-rotted compost is a plant's best friend. It not only provides nutrients but also improves soil structure, promoting healthy root growth. Now let's talk about those uninvited guests, pests. They might be tiny, but they can cause a lot of trouble. Aphids, spider mites, mealybugs, oh my, but don't worry. Dealing with pests doesn't mean you have to resort to harsh chemicals. There are natural remedies that are safe for both your plants and the environment. Neem oil, for instance, is a great natural pesticide. It's derived from the neem tree and can help control a wide range of pests. Then there's soap water just a mild soap mixed with water. Spray it on the affected areas, and you'll see those pests start to pack their bags. Essentially, a healthy plant is less likely to be attacked by pests. So keep an eye on your plants, provide them with the nutrients they need, and step in with natural remedies when you see pests making themselves at home. With these tips, your plants can regain their health and vitality. And remember, a little care goes a long way in the world of plants. Prevention is better than cure, and it applies to plants too. Keeping your leafy friends vibrant and healthy is all about consistency and care. Regular maintenance routines are the key to prevent wilting and ensure your plants thrive. Firstly, watering. It's not just about how much but also how often. Most plants prefer a good soak followed by a period of drying out. So wait until the top layer of soil is dry before you water again. Next, let's talk light. Plants need light for photosynthesis so make sure your plants get enough of it. But remember, too much direct sunlight can scorch the leaves. And finally, don't forget about the soil. Periodic soil checks will help you detect problems early. If the soil looks compacted or depleted, it might be time for a refresh. And remember, a good nutrient-rich compost can do wonders for your plant's health. With preventive care, your plants can stay healthy and lush. A little love goes a long way, folks. Now, let's witness the miracle of revival. The journey from wilting to thriving is nothing short of a botanical renaissance a testament to the resilience of life and the transformative power of care and knowledge. Picture the fern, once drooping and dull, now standing tall with vibrant fronds dancing in the breeze, a living embodiment of rebirth. Or the succulent, previously parched and withering, now plump and radiant, its juicy leaves gleaming with vitality. Consider the orchid, its wilted blooms a distant memory, now adorned with a crown of exquisite flowers, each petal a testament to its triumphant resurgence and the once yellowed leaves of the Monstera, now a lush green tapestry, each leaf a testament to its renewed strength. Each of these stories is a testament to the power of revival. And remember, you too hold this power. With patience, diligence, and armed with the right knowledge, you have the power to bring your plants back to life.